Hey, welcome to Crossroads. My name is Manny and I'm so glad you've joined us. Make sure to leave a comment or fill out our online connection card. We want to hear from you and know what God is doing in your life. This is also a great way for you to get information about our church and let us know how we can be praying with you. At Crossroads, we are one church in multiple locations. And if you haven't heard, we are all about raising up the next generation of leaders. We would love to have your kids attend one of our Kids Link services during one of our weekends. Or if you have a teenager in sixth through 12th grade, we would love to have them at one of our Crave Youth services on Wednesday nights. For more information, locations, and service times, please check our website out at crossroadcn.com. Would you pray with me today as we prepare ourselves for the rest of service? Jesus, thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness. We invite you into our service today. Would you speak to us, be with us, and minister to us as we worship your holy name? It's in your name that we pray. Amen. over our communities, over our families. Come awaken your people. Come awaken the city. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out.
Thank you for being a part of worship with us. I am so thankful for all of the amazing things going on here at Crossroads and all of the generous people who partner with us week in and week out to help us accomplish the mission we are on to see rural communities transform for the cause of Christ. If you would like to partner with us through giving, we have three easy ways for you to give. You can give on our website, on our church app, or text to give. Now, we're about to hear from our lead pastor, Rich Clay, as he continues our series, ghost stories. Welcome to Crossroads and thank you for joining us today. I'm so excited about what God is doing at our church. And before we jump into our message today, I want to give you a personal invitation to visit one of our seven campuses. If you never have, I would love for you to experience a service live. And we have seven campuses all over Northern Illinois and Southern Wisconsin, and consider yourself invited. Now, for right now, you're watching online, and I'm glad you've joined us, and we're excited about moving into the third part of our series. This is so, so exciting because, uh, by the way, the series is entitled Ghost Stories, and what it really is is an in-depth look at the person of the Holy Spirit, that third person of the Godhead, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, we were just talking about this recently. We talked about how easy it is to kind of neglect the person of the Holy Spirit or to forget about that third person. Everybody talks about God on a regular basis, and many people talk about Jesus, but not everybody understands the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Week one, we talked about the person of the Holy Spirit, that that's exactly who he is, a person who can lead you, guide you, teach you, walk with you, encourage you, strengthen you. And then the second week, we talked about the presence of the Holy Spirit, how he never leaves you, he never forsakes you, and he can guide you, he can convict you, he can correct you, he can lead you down certain paths, he can reset you. So, now today, what we want to take a look at is the Holy Spirit's power, the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm really excited to be able to share some of the truths with you today that we're going to look at because I believe Jesus not only left us with someone that could be with us and be a friend and be a comforter, but he gave us a supernatural power to be able to live this life an overcoming way. So let's start by looking at Acts chapter one, verse eight. Here's where we're gonna lay the foundation. Here's what it says. But you will receive power, there's that word, power, when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and even to the ends of the earth. Now, Notice something, Jesus promised this power back in John 14, 16. We started this uh, series two weeks ago by quoting this scripture. And here's what Jesus said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you to be with you forever. 
Then Jesus does something else. Then he tells his disciples in the book of Acts to wait for the Holy Spirit promise. So while he's alive, walking with them, he said, hey guys, don't worry. I'm gonna send you the Holy Spirit and he's gonna give you some power like you've never known before, even more power than you have with me. And so then Jesus, watch this, after he, after he has uh, died and after he has resurrected, he comes back and he visits his disciples before he ascends into heaven. And he says in Acts 1-4, don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. What was that gift? It was the Holy Spirit. And verse five says this, for John, John the Baptist, baptized with water into salvation, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. There it is. Their disciples were born again, they were saved, they'd been baptized in water, but they had not yet received an endowment of power, a baptism of power. Now, in Acts chapter two, this baptism of the Holy Spirit was fulfilled. Listen to verse four. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Wow. So that's the fulfillment of what Jesus had been promised to give us this power. Now let's take a deeper look at this power and let's look at how can we access this power? How can we be baptized in the spirit today so that we can live the powerful life that the disciples lived after their upper room experience? So I'm going to talk today about two things that the power of the Holy Spirit does for us. And the first one is vitally important. Here's what it is. The Holy Spirit, first of all, will give you power to overcome sins. The power to overcome sins. You know, last weekend after our service, a young man came up to me and he said, Pastor Rich, I know Jesus has forgiven me of all of my sins, but I still keep sinning. <laughs> what should I do? Wow, I thought, how transparent. I love the honesty of this young man. Truth be known, we're all in that same boat. Every single one of us sin, okay? We just do. That's what Jesus does when he covers us. He covers us of our sins, but we don't wanna sin. We don't wanna live in a place of defeat. It's a common problem among Christians. We are far from perfect. Literally, the, uh, to sin is to miss the mark. It's an actual archery term, to be honest with you. It talks about an archer taking out his arrow, taking out his bow, and aiming but missing the mark. That's what the word sin actually means. Not a really big, difficult concept to understand, is it? It's just missing the mark. But you know what? I've got some fantastic news for us today. I mean, I am so excited to be able to tell you something that I believe is gonna transform your life. And here's what it is. The Holy Spirit can give us power to live an overcoming life and literally live an overcoming life over sin. Now, I'm gonna take you to Galatians chapter five. Let's look at verses 16 through 18. Here's what it says. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict, meaning the Spirit and the flesh are warring against each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, notice three things about the Spirit of God that dwells within you and how it affects your ability to overcome sin. First of all, the Spirit will fight for you if you allow the Spirit to fight for you. The Spirit of God that is inside of you literally fights against your flesh. What is the flesh, by the way? You know, the flesh is what controlled you before you gave your life to Christ. Before Christ, 
Your flesh dictated everything that you did. It dictated your thoughts. It dictated your will. It dictated your emotions. And that's what the flesh does. Your flesh, by the way, does not want to let control of your life, even though you're born again. Even though Jesus resides inside of you and the Spirit of God lives in you, your flesh is at war. Your flesh is still over here. Even though it's been crucified with Christ, it's over here wanting control of your life. See, your flesh knows that God has you and has your spirit, but your flesh wants to make you miserable even though you have the spirit of God living inside of you. Your flesh wants to control you with, well, let me give you an example. Your flesh wants to control you with things like fear. Did you know that? But do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that God has not given you a spirit of fear, but one of love, one of power, and one of a sound mind. But your flesh wants you to grab on to fear. And it is the opposite. The flesh is usually the opposite of what the Spirit of God is doing in your life. See, your flesh actually wants you to believe that Jesus wasn't enough for you, that Jesus isn't enough for you. Your flesh will say things like this, you need anger to be satisfied. Go ahead, be angry. You know, it's kind of funny. The other day I was driving down the road and I was actually listening to a tape on being led by the Spirit. And I was kind of just in this, this atmosphere of the presence of the Lord when this guy came up behind me and he's like one inch behind me. And all of a sudden I started feeling myself going, what are you doing, man? Get, get, how much, get in the other lane, you know, and all this anger started coming up inside of me, and I had to laugh. I was like, I just was thinking about the Holy Spirit, and look how quickly my flesh came in and said, be angry, be angry. Somebody made you angry. See, your flesh will say that Jesus is not enough to be your peace. He's not enough. You need, your flesh will cry out and say, you need substance. You need somehow to comfort yourself with substance. You need pornography. See, your flesh will say things like, you'll always be depressed. You'll never get over this depression. It's part of your family history. Your flesh will cry out and call you back in and say, you, you, you will always be a victim. You're a victim and you'll always be a victim. You'll always be an addict. That's how the flesh works. The flesh tries to pull us back into its control. But you know what? God's spirit, listen to this. God's spirit is speaking to you something completely different. God's spirit is speaking a different language. We're actually gonna hear about a different language in just a moment. But God's Spirit speaks a different language. Remember what Paul taught us? When you live by the Spirit, you are not under the law, but you are under grace. See, the law brings us into condemnation because every one of us breaks the law. Did I get mad that day when that guy pulled up behind me while I'm listening to a message on the Holy Spirit? Darn right I got mad. Why? Because that was my flesh. But guess what? My flesh is not really me. I'm not really my flesh. We, we are, our flesh tries to convince us that we're, that old person is us, but it's not. We are new creatures in Christ. We've been born again. We are, we're not under the law of guilt and shame and condemnation. We're under grace. We're under the spirit of grace. See, the spirit will lead us out of temptation and into the truth of who we really are. So all we have to do is listen to the Spirit. We don't have to fight against, we don't have to wake up going, I'm not gonna sin, I'm not gonna sin, I'm not gonna sin. Guess what? When you do that, you actually sin. You bring yourself into the awareness of sin. All we have to say is that the Spirit of God dwells within me. The Spirit of God is what is fighting against my flesh. Now, the Spirit will speak of his grace. It will speak of his mercy. It will speak of his goodness. By the way, you know what? Here's what the Spirit says. You're not a loser. You're not an addict. You're not lifelong depressed. You don't need drugs. You don't need substance. You don't need illicit sex. You don't need destructive habits in your life. That's what the Spirit of God says. The Spirit of God says you are a Spirit-filled, overcoming, highly favored believer of the Most High God. 
That's what your spirit says to you over and over. And listen, by the way, the spirit of God dwells within you the moment you got saved, right? But when you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, it's like a supercharge of God's presence. Then he really comes on, and that's where you can say with confidence, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm an overcomer. I'm going to live life victoriously. I don't need substance. I don't need pornography. I don't need addictions. I don't need to be angry. I don't need to be depressed. I have the Spirit of God dwelling in me. Now, watch this. And I want, it, I want you to see a flow here of how the Spirit of God helps us overcome sin. First of all, he fights our flesh. Secondly, the Spirit produces fruit. I love this, okay? When you say yes to the Spirit, here's what starts to grow inside of you. Galatians 5, and 23. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Yeah, self-control, Rich. And that guy pulled up behind me. I could have just said, hello, I'm in the presence of the Lord. I'm having a great day. I'm filled with self-control and joy. Here's what, listen to this. Against such things, there is no law. Wow, walking in the spirit. Now watch this. Now the third thing that happens in overcoming sin is the spirit keeps us free keeps us free. Galatians 5, 24 and 25. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh. That flesh has been crucified with its passions and with its desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. What that's saying is once we begin to allow the Spirit to fight, fruit produces and freedom is the result. I can walk in freedom. I can be free. Yes, free from sin. Now, I know that there's always going to be fa failure in our lives, but we're free from the power of that sin on our lives. Wow, good news, right? Now, watch this. It even gets better. Now, the second thing that I want to show you concerning the power of the Holy Spirit is how the Holy Spirit gives us supernatural power to fight supernatural battles. How many know that you are going to fight back? You're going to face a battle in life. Hey, as a believer, the enemy's not going to sit back and go, have at it. He's going to come at you in spiritual battle. And the only way to be, be victorious in a spiritual battle is through a spiritual means, spiritual weapons. Now, I want to show you in 1 Corinthians 12, there's nine spiritual weapons that a believer can have. Now, not all believers always have all nine, but you know what Paul said, eagerly desire these gifts. So I'm going to challenge you. Stop believing that maybe these gifts aren't for you. Start looking at them differently. Matter of fact, I'm going to give you a different picture probably than, than these have ever been taught to you. I'm going to, I'm going to show you these as weapons that you can have in your quiver, like these arrows, weapons in our quiver when we get into a spiritual battle. All right, ready to go. 1 Corinthians 12, verses 7 through 11. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given a spirit of message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by the means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the same Spirit. To another, miraculous powers by the same Spirit. To another, prophecy of the same Spirit. To another, distinguishing of spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And still to another, the interpretation of these tongues. All these are the work of one in the same Spirit. They come from being baptized in the Holy Spirit. He makes them available to whoever will seek them out. And he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Okay, now notice. All right. There are three categories of spiritual gifts designed to be weapons that are used to build up the believer. Three categories. Now, I want you to think of an archer because we started out by saying this. Sin 
is what? It's missing the mark. But God now comes and gives us spiritual gifts so that we can use spiritual gifts to hit the mark, <laughs> right? Like, boom, like David with his stone and slingshot. Do you think that was just David's skill? Partially it was, but the big part of it was God's anointing. So when God's anointing comes on the weapons that he gives us or the gifts that he gives us, they hit the mark. They do the purpose of what they were called to do. So I'm going to break these down into three categories, these nine gifts. First of all, there's weapons for the mind. Now, how many know the enemy will attack your mind? He will attack your mind. He will cause you to try to you know, grab onto fear, to grab onto anxiety, to grab onto anger. Um, he will do things that will challenge your mind. And when he attacks your mind, there are three supercharged arrows to pull from our quiver. And I'm going to give you these right now. The first one is wisdom. And I want you to just think about this arrow. This is like Robin Hood, but I want you to think about like the Avengers arrows. Remember the Avengers? They have these, this little missile at the end of it. And when they hit, it went, poof, it exploded. Remember Acts 1.8, you will receive power. The word power is dunamis in the Greek. It means explosive power. So you've been given this explosive power gift of wisdom. Wisdom. Here's what wisdom is. The gift of wisdom is the Spirit's voice supernaturally disclosing the mind, the purpose, and the will of God as applied to a specific situation. Now, it's a fancy definition, but what it means is this. God will give you wisdom about something that you had no knowledge of for your divine protection. Let me give you knowledge. Knowledge is the supernatural revelation of information pertaining to a person or a circumstance, wisdom or knowledge. Several years ago, I, was, I had a speaking engagement in Dallas, Texas. And I was getting ready to fly home and I went to the airport in Dallas, excited to get home, missing my family, and my, my flight got canceled. Now there were flights that were, were going out and I wanted to jump up there and grab that next flight to go up. And all of a sudden, the Spirit of God spoke to me a word of wisdom and said, I want you to wait and stay here and get a flight tomorrow. That was really hard and it was hard to explain to my family, right? They wanted me to come home and there were flights going out. One particular flight I could have flown on, I could have made it. It had a layover it had a stop in Cincinnati and then went from Dallas to Cincinnati, Cincinnati to Detroit. Detroit is where I was living at the time. But the Holy Spirit was checking me in my spirit. And he was also at the same time giving me knowledge about something. He was sharing with me something about, um, I, I, I want you to stay here for the night. I want you to just spend time with me. So I, I did it, called Lisa, she was fine with it. Next morning, I jumped on a flight nonstop to Detroit, came home. What I didn't realize was the night before, the flight that I could have got on crashed 30 miles from the Detroit airport. I've heard knowledge and wisdom spoken of like this. Knowledge tells you that there's quicksand in front of you. Wisdom tells you to go around it. Knowledge often tells you what's going on in a situation. See, we need revelation. To, we don't always know what's going on. We should be praying every day. God, what's, go, what's going on here? What's happening in my life? What's happening in my marriage? What's happening in my leadership? That's knowledge. And God will say, let me reveal to you what you don't know. But the wisdom is, now that you know what you didn't know, God will tell you what to do about what you know. That's how it works. Now, here's another one. Actually, I should take two out, right? Because we got wisdom and knowledge. Let me take another one out. It's called faith. What is faith? Faith is real simple. Faith is this. There's going to be times in your life, you're a person of faith, all right? All of you are people of faith. But there's going to be times in your life where you're going to face a situation and you're going to need a supercharged dose of faith. The gift of faith is like, yes, I have faith that God exists. I have faith that Jesus saved me. But this faith comes down and goes, I'm in a tough situation right now, and I'm just going to believe. Like, I'm getting planted, right? I'm getting planted with my, 
my, I'm taking another arrow out of my quiver. I need supernatural faith. Maybe you, you come home from a doctor's report and you're like, I need, I got, I got to stand. All right. Maybe, maybe you got a bad report at work. You've lost your job. I, what, what are you going to do? I'm going to believe. It's a supernatural endowment of faith. And you can ask for it in those difficult times. You can say, God, I need supernatural faith right now. All right. Those are called weapons of the mind. Now, secondly, there's weapons for the body. What happens when the enemy attacks your body? Well, let's go get another arrow out of our quiver, all right? So we have, we're, we're protected our mind with these. Next, we take out the weapons for our body. And the first one is healings. Wow, healings. You know, I think we, we, we so forget the ministry of the Holy Spirit that we forget that God's given the body of Christ, the church, believers, the ability to pray for the gift of healing. Now, let me explain something to you. Healing, um, by the way, notice there, it's the plural. There are more sicknesses and diseases. There's many sicknesses and diseases. Here's what Jesus did. He died for them all at the cross, right? We know that. So I, 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 I begin my position by saying, Lord, 2,000 years ago, you provided for my healing. I can ask to be totally healed. I can believe that by your stripes, I am healed. But God also endues the spirit of God on people with the gift of healing. Do you know Jesus had the gift of healing when he walked on earth? And Jesus healed people that weren't even born again, that weren't even saved. And so the gift of healing can operate through us. I'll never forget when uh, my oldest son was just a, just a little guy and I came home from the church on lunch break and he had been sick for three days, really, really sick. And I remember coming up to him and praying and I, I looked at him and I said, Jared, we're just gonna believe God. And I'm gonna ask God to give me the gift of healing right now. And you're too weak to really have faith, but I'm gonna pray in the name of Jesus that you experience healing right now. He'd been sick for three days, couldn't eat, couldn't keep anything down. And I just prayed a simple prayer. Father, you love Jared. You love him more than I do. I'm his earthly father, but you're his heavenly father. Your word says that by your stripes, we are healed. I ask for divine healing on Jared's body right now. In Jesus' name, amen. So I was getting ready. I put my coat on and I was getting ready to go out the door. And I heard this little voice say, Daddy, can I have some pizza? And I knew right then God had touched his body. Wow, healings. Let's believe for healings, church. Maybe you're watching online. I'm gonna do something right now that I hadn't planned on doing. It's not in my notes, but I feel led of the spirit. And I don't want this to seem strange, but wherever you're at watching in your home or listening in your car, whatever part of your body is affecting you, I want you to place your hand on it right now. I'm gonna pray a prayer for you. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray the gift of healing would manifest through this message, through the, through the audio, through the visual, that by your stripes, they would be healed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Wow, that's exciting. All right, I'm gonna come out back here and get another arrow out of my quiver. Let's talk about miracles. Oh, miracles. We just, you know what? Here's what I believe. I'm just gonna say this, okay? I believe the more we see things as miracles, the more miracles we'll, we'll see. So I think we have miracles happen every day in our life, but we attribute it to something else. What if we began to attribute everything in our life to the miracle working power of God? Now, what are miracles? It is the manifestation of power beyond the ordinary course of supernatural law. It is the divine enablement to do something that could not be done naturally. I've experienced a miracle. Hey, by the way, miracles and healing sometimes go together. I'll never forget this in all of my life. I had been diagnosed with heart disease at a very young age. And I was getting ready to go have some medical treatment when one of our elders' wives came up to me who was known as being gifted in the Holy Spirit. She flowed and operated in the Holy Spirit. And I was hoping she would have some word of prophecy or some great word over me, like, 
thus saith the Lord, you are healed. And I was like, I was a little disappointed when she looked at me and all she said was, pastor, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. I was like, Ooh, I don't know what that means. But let me tell you what happened. I actually had a report. I had, I had a report on my condition. And in the heart disease area, my, I had two of my major arteries 100% blocked. And they were getting ready to do bypass surgery when the surgeon said, we're going to wait for a couple of weeks. I was like, couple, why, what are we waiting? So two weeks later, I go back into his office and he said this. He said, we've been studying your film over and over and over again. And we've discovered that what has happened in your body, and he called it a natural bypass, we can't improve on. My body had performed a bypass, and they called it a natural bypass. But I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to stand on God's word right now and say it wasn't a natural bypass. It was a supernatural bypass. It was God's hand doing a miracle that brought about a healing in a different kind of way. What is the miracle that you're looking for in your life? What miracle do you need? God can give you a miracle. We need to look for miracles, talk about miracles, pray for miracles, stir up the Holy Spirit of miracles in our life. Okay, now number three, prophecy. What is prophecy? Prophecy is a divine disclosure of the Spirit to edify someone, to bring encouragement or comfort. It's for edification. I remember years ago, my bus pastor, we had a bus ministry back in the day. My bus pastor and his little wife, they, they wanted children so bad. We bust in four or 500 children every Tuesday night. We ministered to kids in the inner city on Saturday. They were around kids all the time and they wanted children so bad. And biologically, they were just, wasn't happening. And I remember when I was praying over them one day and God gave me a word of prophecy for them. And I looked at them and I said, God is going to give you the desire of your, your heart. And their eyes lit up. They were, like, they were thinking, God's going to give us a child. And I paused and the Spirit of God said, no, he's going to give you double the desire of your heart. Well, about six months later, what came available was this beautiful little boy. His mother was a drug addict and could not take care of him. And they wanted to have children so bad, so they adopted this little boy six months down the road. They were so happy, and I was a little confused until six months later, they had another, they, the uh, adoption crew called them and said, would you like his little brother? And so they had two little blessings, and God get used me to prophesy that that was coming to them, and that was a great way of edifying them. All right. Now, I'm going to move quickly on these last three, but they're really important. They're weapons for your spirit. I think I'm down a few arrows, okay? So that was uh, prophecy, all right? So let's look at these three. They're weapons of the spirit. What happens when the enemy attacks your spirit? There's three weapons you can use. The first one is this, the discerning of spirits. What is discerning of spirits? It's the ability to discern the spirit world. Where is this depression coming from? Where is this anxiety coming from? Do I just need to get a good night's rest or is this the attack of the enemy that's coming to me? All right? So it's the ability to discern the spirit world, the, to be able to direct, detect the true source of circumstances of motives and of people. All right? People can be used in negative ways. Number two, Getting down to our last arrow is tongues. Tongues, speaking in tongues is the gift of speaking supernaturally, a language not known. I've been speaking in tongues for my own personal edification for years and years and years. And I believe that there's something powerful. You know, when you don't always know what to pray for, you can pray in a spiritual language. You can pray in your, in your God-given language, um, Romans talks about we don't really always know how to pray. And when I'm really pressed on every side, I use the gift of speaking in tongues as an edification gift. 
You know, one of the things that also we can do, and the last arrow I'm going to get that I want to talk about is this. I want to talk about the interpretation of tongues, but I want to talk about these together for just a moment, okay? Because the gift of speaking in tongues is made available to us. God will give it to you. It can also be used in gatherings, and many times in gatherings where there's unbelievers, a message in tongues is given, which may seem really kind of crazy, but then an interpretation comes. And that interpretation is exactly what that person has been dealing with. It's exactly what they've been going through. And they know there's no way anybody could know what was going on. I believe that praying in tongues builds us up. It edifies us. It's, it's a powerful gift to be used to fight discouragement and loneliness. And then interpretation of tongues is really important. Do you know that I have some time back began to ask God to actually give me the interpretation of my own tongues? And I want to encourage you to do this. I've been in a devotional time and been praying in, in my heavenly language and praying in this, this gift of tongues that God gave me. And then I'll say, God, give me the interpretation of that. And I've found that to be very edifying and very powerful. But one of the things that I find with the discerning of spirits, with tongues and interpretation of tongues is this, is that sometimes the enemy attacks our spirit and we get down and we get discouraged and we don't know what to do. I shared with, with you all two weeks ago, I had a tremendous spiritual battle, tremendous spiritual attack. I felt like the enemy was coming against me, really wanting me to give up. And as I went in, I began to pray in the spirit. I began, to, I began to spend time with the Lord and God began to discern the spirits. He began to show me the motives of people. He began to show me where the attack was coming from. And I was, I was brought out of that darkness. I was brought out of that, that time where I was really battling a tough spiritual battle. And I believe when our spirits are attacked, God gives us discernment. He gives us tongues. He gives us the interpretation of tongues. We can see God do things in our life that will minister to our spirits. These gifts are gifts of the Spirit. So let, let's close our teaching today. We've, give, we've been given a lot of stuff here today, but let's close with this. It's an important question. How do I receive this endowment of power? What do I need to do to activate the Spirit of God in me? Well, let me tell you something. It's the same thing that we do to receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. It's the same thing that we do to receive anything from God. We simply ask in faith. That's how we do it. And I want to close by sharing a really important passage of Scripture. It's found in Luke chapter 11 verses 9 through 13. Listen to this. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. To the one who seeks, finds. And to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you fathers, if your son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead? Or if he asks for an egg, will he give him a scorpion? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Wow, that's it, church. Here's how you receive the Holy Spirit. You ask, you seek every gift don't settle for one or two. Get all nine. And then you knock. Knock on the heart, on the door of the Lord and say, Lord, I want more and more and more of your spirit. Church, that's the power and the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit operating together to help you fight every spiritual battle that you ever face, giving you the weapons that you need. And so I just want to pray in closing for every person that would like to receive 
the Holy Spirit today. I believe God can do it right now as I pray, right in your home. I believe God can come upon you in a powerful way. Let's bow our hearts and let's ask him to do that. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that every person listening to my voice that's seeking more power, that wants to overcome sin in their life, would simply say, Father, baptize me in the Holy Spirit's power. Come upon me and do it today. Do it right now. I am hungry. I am seeking. I am asking. I am open to receive everything you have for me. You are a good father, and you would never give me anything to harm me, but only that which is good. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you just accepted Jesus into your life today, we want to say congratulations. Welcome to the family. We believe you've made the best decision for your life, and we want to help you start a strong relationship with God. So leave us a comment below or fill out our online connection card, and we will reach out to you. We would love for you to join us as we worship the Lord through one more song as we respond to the message we've just received. Nothing